So we've been looking at the wiring. We've actually redone a lot of the original wiring for the vehicle and removed loads of stuff and basically rerun it all the way through. And we've got a sort of stuffing gland up here into the car, along with the MS wires. Um, and then powering the vacuum pump off of the original relay box so that everything car original car based including brakes is all done off the original wiring and they have a separate low voltage wiring system um, for all the electric stuff as you can see i've got a lot of wires um, because the decision was made to extend the wiring to bring the fuse and relay box within under the dash uh, and like originally it was actually where the vacuum pump was um, and then here's all the wiring we've actually removed as you can see we have two bags full of wiring that was unnecessary basically uh, so we've had a bit, a bit of a, a weight saving there which is uh quite, quite good uh two ecus so it was an auto it had an automatic ecu for the automatic box ecu for the car engine as well so yeah, all in all, uh, a pretty good saving considering we've got quite a lot of additional weight in the back end of it and the front end of it. So I've started running in the coolant system. Uh, luckily I had some of the original Tesla ones, uh, which like the vent pipes. I didn't think they were gonna work, but actually I allowed enough space above the subframe for them to uh, fit in really nicely. And they sort of run up and over and ends there. And then on the outlet it comes nicely round the uh, drive shaft up and over and I put like a mounting point there a joiner and then we'll run in the rest of the way down the vehicle just going to remove the handbrake now um, I've mounted the DC to DC down the front uh, put on a bit of an angle over to one side so we can get pipes up the side of it um, my plan is then to take the DC to DC and come out of here run it through my battery then back out for the battery and back down um, so that should work quite well so as you can see we've got our radiators mounted in place um, now if somebody were going to say oh, your bonnet catch goes there well it did not anymore um, I'm basically going to put quick releases on the bonnet um, so I can get access to the battery if necessary um, so basically just in a bracket that runs down over the front support the radiators Doubled them up and I've actually staggered them slightly just so I could bring them closer together to give me enough clearance on either side of here. Uh, basically means I can still undo the caps just about, hopefully on both. Yep, just enough clearance. So, just do the last couple of bolts up and then I can start getting these uh, all plumbed in. So I'm now fitting the fans to the radiators. Um, they are horrible little fans, um, 12 volt, 80 watts, uh, seven inch, really struggle to find seven inch fans. They're the only thing that will fit on these radiators. Unfortunately, they've got these horrible pull through spring things. Um, some point when we get time, we'll actually make proper fan shrouds to go on here with the fan on a push system instead of a pull system. But for the minute, I'm just gonna put these in. Luckily, it's got some nice double-sided foam bits um, just to protect the radius from vibrations um, and yeah for now it will do it will get us on the road get us testing um, and then we can come back to this at a later date we may find we have to put bigger radiators on we may find they don't need the radiators at all um, it's just this is the cheapest option um, to start with for all the testing and stuff and then we can uh, mess around with different radiator sizes as we go along to see what works best with the large tester driving it so I'm just putting the water pump in after running my coolant lines down. I've got still got to tidy them up. I'm just trying to get the length right at the moment. Um, so this is the water pump I'm tr trialing. It's out of a VW, I think Mark 5 or Mark 6 Golf. It's the auxiliary water pump. Uh, really cheap and cheerful. Um, we're going to give it a go and see if it's powerful enough. Um, if not, I'll swap it to one of the Tesla water pumps. Um, but it's three quarter inch fitting, so. Same size as everything else. Um, now I've mounted it near the back of the car, um, so there's nowhere sensible really up around the front. Um, but it needs to be on the cold side. So bottom hose on the radiator, top hose is hot, so it needs to be on the cold side. So you come out the bottom of the radiator, through your pump, then into your motor. Um, and with the Teslas, it's motor side first. Inverter is the outlet, not the other way around. 
Um, I don't know what effect it would have if you ran it the other way around, but obviously the coolant wouldn't be as efficient on the motor and the motor is the part that gets the hottest on the Tesla stuff. Um, with the way they're arranged, um, the motor peaks out, I think it goes out on over temperature around 185 degrees, whereas the inverter goes out about 85 degrees. Um, so you tend to go into the motor first, scrub a little temperature off, and then through the inverter. Um, but as I said, we're doing a coolant mod soon, which will be splitting it. Um, so we should be able to run a, a, a lot more efficient cooling and in theory push it for a lot longer. A quick video update on the Skyline Tesla powered. Um, as you can see, everything's in. We've been doing loads of testing on chargers and stuff. Um, I've got neat in the clock my wires. I've got all my low voltage junction box in there. It's a bit of a test one, just see how things go, because we're going to build a PCB with everything built in. There's a bit of a, a mess in there at the moment. Got my temperature and my switches. So I've got... Let's have a look. So I've got my ignition live which closes my there's my pre-charge and my um, negative contactor and when I press start it closes the main contactor as you can hear and I've literally got drive and reverse which is really simple and this is my switch for my charger so if I put that on it tells the charge it's okay to charge and they initiate uh, nice and straightforward hydraulic handbrake not all plumbed up yet but there is this little switch here I'm about to plumb in that will do full regen or whatever regen I set it at when I pull that lever. So theoretically, I shouldn't need the hydraulic handbrake. Got a bit of a play and see if I can actually lock the wheels up with regen. Uh, I've got a test of throttle pedal. I'm back in there. You see, we've had a bit of fun drifting around. Uh, that'll be tagged onto, onto this video as well. Uh, seats in, harnesses on, uh, all the coolant systems in now. Um, everything's working really really well so far so let's just start doing testing and see if we can break it the problem is it's coming back alive that's to give her a dig in there now to straighten her up oh here we go oh yeah time for tandems <coughs> there goes the shit oh yeah let's get in let's get So, uh, 